a final last attempt to unite Europe. But this time it will be under a religious political union. What you're about to watch is a powerful end time message by Pastor Ted Wilson and this message is coming from the prophetic books of Daniel and Revelation. We are going to understand what is really happening in our world today and where we are in the world's history. So without wasting much time, let's get right into the video. For more than 500 years, Rome appeared to be invincible. Her flag waving from the British Isles to the Persian Gulf, from the North Sea to the Sahara Desert, from the Atlantic to the Euphrates and beyond, one of the largest empires in the world. But what did the Bible predict? Verse 41. Whereas you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. The Bible did not predict that a fifth world empire would arise after Rome. It predicted a divided empire. Another single world empire would not follow Rome and never has. The feet of iron and clay represent the divisions of the Roman Empire. And this is exactly what happened. Europe was divided just as the prophecy described that it would be. The barbarian tribes attacked Western Europe in the middle of the fourth century. And during the, the ravaging attacks, the Roman Empire was divided exactly as the Bible predicted. Well, uh, a man in Europe once asked a preacher, how do you know the Bible is really true? Well, sir, responded the preacher, you're standing on it. Oh, what do you mean? The earth beneath your feet proves it. And then the preacher explained. The Bible predicted that Europe would be divided. Europe today exactly fulfills that prophecy. The skeptic was rather astonished and astounded. The Bible goes on to say, in helping us to understand this particular prophecy in verse 43, and as you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. So throughout history, the kings of Europe attempted through intermarriage to unite Europe into one empire. Utterly failed. One famous example of this is when Napoleon divorced his wife, Josephine, and married Louise of Austria to secure relations with that country, Austria, and further his goal of uniting the entire continent of Europe. As prophecy predicted, he utterly failed. The Bible says, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another just as iron does not mix with clay. Besides intermarriage, there was a second way that, that political leaders attempted to unite Europe. They attempted to accomplish their goals through, naturally, conflict and war. Charles V wanted to unite Europe. He failed. Charlemagne wanted to unite Europe. He failed. Napoleon tried to unite Europe. He failed. Napoleon wrote in his journal a description of his ambitious plans. There will be one Europe, one currency, one language, one government over all of Europe. But when Napoleon was defeated at the Battle of Waterloo in June of 
1815, he said this, God Almighty is too much for me. So the Bible is accurate. The ancient prophecies written hundreds of years before speak to our hearts today. And all attempts to unite Europe for any length of time will have to deal with these few words from an ancient Bible prophecy. They will not adhere to one another. The Bible predicts in the book of Revelation a final last attempt to unite Europe. But this time it will be under a religious political union. This is so true. Daniel chapter 2 verse 34 and Revelation chapter 11 verse 15 tell us that the kingdom of God will overcome the kingdoms of the world. Then the seventh angel sounded and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. So how would the kingdom of God overcome the kingdoms of the world? The Bible tells us that the stone or the rock that was cast in Daniel chapter 2 verse 34 represents Christ whose second advent would actually destroy all other kingdoms and establish God's kingdom that shall rule forever and ever. Ellen Jean White describes the kingdom of God in a very beautiful way and she says, The government of the kingdom of Christ is like no earthly government. It is a representation of the characters of those who compose the kingdom. Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Christ asked, or with what comparison shall we compare it? He could find nothing on earth that would serve as a perfect comparison. Hallelujah. So this tells us that we should not put our trust in worldly kingdoms or worldly powers that rise and fall. Worldly kingdoms that promise peace but do not give perfect peace. Instead, we should put our hope and trust in the kingdom of God, the kingdom that never fails, the kingdom that promises perfect peace, the kingdom of righteousness. Friends, I'm so happy to be part of this kingdom. And if you want to be part of the kingdom of God, there is only one sure way, you know, and that way is through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Friends, this is all that I had to share with you today. If this video was helpful, like, share, and comment. Thank you for watching. My name is Brother Lawrence and see you next time.